this is something I think has gotten increasing attention, but is still very much uh, misunderstood. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could just run us through briefly, what is cutting? Cutting is a coping mechanism. Um, it's a way to try to handle things that feel overwhelming. Um, what cutting isn't is most of the time it's not a way to try to get attention. And it's not something that's easily stopped or started. Um, and it is something that um, does require you know help to figure out um, what it looks like can be very varied it can and most typically is um, cutting with a sharp instrument so whether it's a razor blade or a, um, a knife something of that matter but it could be as limitless as any way to inflict damage on yourself so sometimes it's scratching burning um, picking at wounds that are already there, um, anything that would elicit some sort of response in the body because of the damage. And in your treatment, have you been seeing an increase in this type of behavior? Um, that's hard to answer. I think we're talking about it more. I would say that I think there is a prevalence of it, and unfortunately where I think the prevalence is um, increasing is in younger children. So I would say that probably you know, eight years ago, I would talk, be talking more to high school students that were struggling with this, and now it really is getting into the middle school. And I'm seeing a lot more um, 12, 13-year-olds that are struggling with, um, with this behavior. So is there, a, on that note, like a profile of, a, a, a statistically speaking, a, a typical cutter? I think that typically um, it is kind of when they start hitting adolescence and so probably I would say 11, 12 to early 20s through college age would be what would be the typical age. It usually is females, but um, males definitely do engage in self-harm and um, I think that that is, they still can be at risk. As far as risk factors and um, how that plays in, I think that there's research that shows that kids that have been bullied are at higher risk for, for this kind of behavior. Are there any situations where um, you know, certain events are more likely to trigger cutting, um, be it in the home or at school? I think that what it comes down to is it's how the child can handle emotional dysregulation or really uncomfortable negative emotions because you know it is a coping mechanism it's usually about not being able to handle how they're feeling on the inside and depending on what kind of skills they have in order to deal with that if they have a solid group of friends if they are close to their family then they might have other avenues to deal with it um, if they are a little bit more isolated I think this is where boys can be at risk because they're not as fluent sometimes about talking how they f about how they feel that those are um, kind of risk factors or triggers um, that can lead to this, but I'm not sure if there's any one issue other than the statistic about bullying. Is it likely to co-occur with other emotional disorders or illnesses? I do think that it could be more prevalent if they're struggling with anxiety and depression. Again, they're, you know, cutting is a way to try to cope with or handle um, these feelings, and so if they're really struggling with anxiety, if they're struggling with depression. Um, I think it would be fair to point out, because another misconception or, or concern is whether self-harm means suicide. And um, most of the time, it, it does not mean that. Um, that's not to say that self-harming um, kids aren't at a higher risk for suicide, because they are. But in the moment when self-harming is occurring, um, most of the time, it's not about trying to kill themselves. It's about trying to cope with what they're feeling.